This poem is called At the Lakes with Roberta. Our guide, with whom Roberta has already been ingratiating herself in a horribly forward manner, has taken us to Windermere, and tomorrow will take us to Grasmere. Of course, I am eager to see, firsthand as it were, the sources of inspiration, but I fear Roberta's behavior shall spoil the entire experience. Speaking bluntly, she's far too light-hearted, rather superficial if one may say such a thing. And she flatters him, that's the point, she flatters him with her incompetence. I'm afraid I find it unseemly. The fact is, if she continues to distract our guide from his duty as guide, there will be a breach between Roberta and me. The fault will lie with her. It's perfectly clear she came only to enjoy the view. While I can hardly bear it, you see, I can hardly bear the weight of this poetic air, the air that W.W. breathed, such steep atmosphere. There's nothing for it. One must simply never travel with one's female companions. And now, look, our guide is daring to quote from To the Small Celandine, never a favorite of mine. And Roberta's foolish gasps of pleasure hang on the mist. It's unfortunate, really, that he has been quite so taken in, so swallowed up by what one might call a rather ordinary attractiveness. But clearly, I shall remain ignorant for the rest of the tour about the more intimate details of a poet's life.